getting the crop up and out of the ground, uniform plant stands is really, really critical. What are the things that you're seeing that growers, top growers are doing to, to get that uniform plant stand, good emergence out of their out of their corn crop? Well, obviously, besides the new technology with all the precision planters that are out there, those do a really good job at doing mm -hmm. that. Really, the next level you need to look at is seed treatments, and one that I'm very familiar with is a product called Amplify. And I've used it quite a bit. Um, it's been over 10 years now, probably, and had really good luck with it. Maybe one out of 10 years, you don't see the yield expectation that you're looking for, mm -hmm. but really what it does is it gets you that stand count that you're looking for. If you're planting 34,000 seeds, you want 32 and a half to come up. It kind of maybe instead of 30 coming up, you'll get to that 32 mm -hmm. and a half. And what it is, it's just a, um, a denison monophosphate. And as the seed absorbs that phosphate, it just kind of gets it from the crook stage out of the ground and mm -hmm. up and going. Mm -hmm. And it, the more uniform you can get your stand, let's say everything comes out of the ground within 24 hours, that's kind of what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you start getting you know, some plants here and there that are 24, 48, 72 hours behind, technically they become a weed. Mm -hmm. So really I like to use Amplify because it is relatively cheap. And if you can do that, you just end up with a more uniform stand and you end up with more plants. So what kind of yield response have you seen kind of the range? You know, to be honest, it's not um, a bin buster. Mm -hmm. You know, you're probably consistently on corn. Um, I'm probably say four to seven bushels. Mm -hmm. Quite, you can say that pretty confidently. You're in and you're out, are you gonna get 20? Probably not, mm -hmm. um, but you're probably in that four to seven bushel range for, for um, probably a three or four dollar acre yeah, seed treatment. Yeah, so. absolutely. I always figure one bushel pays for it. Yeah. Now, you would use that many times, guys are using that in combination with a row play starter. It's not a replacement. It's, I tell people it's a great complement yes. to a row play starter. What about the selection of products to go in for row? What, what is going to uh, end What's going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of replacement? I mean, guys are spending a lot on genetics. As far as? It, it role placement, and uh, as far as a starter, as a pop-up, what do you look for? Because, yeah. because of the money they're spending on genetics. Yep. So really what we look at is it sometimes frustrates me where a grower will go out and spend 250 up to $300 a bag on seed mm -hmm. corn, and they go through all these winter meetings, and they pick out the best hybrids, and then they will go in and dump in a bunch of inferior starter fertilizer, okay? Um, 10340 has gotten better throughout the years, but it still isn't the best to put in seed furrow. It's really meant more for a two by two band. And the reason is because it does have some impurities in it. It does have some heavy metals, higher salt loads. And if you have a dry spring, um, or if you have lower CECs, you can lose stand count pretty rapidly. And a lot of growers think that it's probably seed germination that's causing mm -hmm. it. And probably nine out of 10 times it isn't. It's probably your liquid fertilizer. So if you can get into a high quality pop-up, you know, a 918.9, a 318.18, stuff like that, that's really the best bet to go. Mm -hmm. okay. Now you've seen a lot of different manufacturers out there. And I know you've mentioned to me that, you know, there's variations in a lot of them. Correct. I mean, there's a multitude of different companies out there right now creating a pop-up fertilizer, if you want to use that term. And raw materials is really what you got to look at. The salt index is kind of misleading because it was really derived after World War II. And it really goes off of the amount of nitrogen that's in, in, a, you know, in combination with the amount of potassium. But it doesn't take into consideration the raw materials. Are you using a potassium hydroxide? Are you using potassium acetate? Are you using potassium chloride? Just as an example for your potassium number. So your salt index will say the same but your true salt load might be two or three X depending on the raw material that you're using. So if you get into an instance where it does turn dry or you have lower CECs, you can lose significant stand count rapidly. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good things to know when you're picking out that, that pop-up fertilizer program. Thanks.